The next chunk of factoring, we're going to look at polynomials with four terms. They're kind of our special cases. And certain polynomials with four terms can be factored using this method called factoring by grouping. Okay. So we'll build to that, starting with this first example. Behaving as we had before, I've got my first term and my second term. Do they share anything in common that we can take out of both? So they have to match exactly. So I've got x plus 1 and x plus 1 that they both share in common. So if I take that factor out of both, what am I left with? So if I take x plus 1 on my first term, I've got x squared left over. And if I take x plus 1 out of the second term, I've got 2 left over. And it's factored like this. So it's basically factored by grouping, but we're starting from the third step. So from the very beginning, factoring by grouping, we have to group the first two terms together and the last two terms together. And whatever sign is on that third term needs to go with the third term. So it's positive, so it doesn't matter that I can just group it to x is positive. So we group the first two, group the second two, and we want to ask, in this first grouping, what do they share in common that I can take out of both? Factor of x squared, and if we do that, what's left over on the inside? So I took two factors, and I've got one left here, and I took two factors out of two factors there, so I'm left with one. Then we want to look in the second group. So common between these two, what can I factor out of both? A positive 2, and when I do that, what am I left with? x plus 1. Then what do you notice? It's what we've had before. Common between these two that we can factor out of both is that entire quantity, x plus 1. And what are we left with from my first term when I take out this piece? got x squared left over. And what do I have left over here when I take out x plus 1? 2. Okay. So factoring by grouping, if we've got the four terms, group the first two and the last two, and see what we can take out, common in both, making these guys match exactly. Because when we do, then we can factor out that common quantity of a binomial. So we'll practice a few. Practice a lot. So I've got four terms here. I'm going to group. So the first two, last two. Probably would help to have a different color so you can see a little bit better. Note to self. And common between these two that we can take out of both is a factor of what? 3x squared. When we do that, what are we left with? 2x minus 3. So we took out everything common between these two. They don't share anything more in common that we could take out. And now we want to look in the second chunk. Common between these two that we can factor out of both is a factor of 2. And when we do that, what are we left with? 2x minus 3. Okay. So we still have two terms. Here's my first. Here's my second. Do these two share anything in common that we can factor out of both? Matching exactly, matching exactly. So if we take that out, if I remove the quantity 2x minus 3, what are we left with? From my first term, I have 3x squared left over. And from the second one, I took out this part, so I'm left with positive 2. So factoring by grouping. Group the first two and the second two, take out what's common, then, if they share factors in common, keep going. Take out the greatest. So, part B. First two, last two. Common between the first two that we can factor out of both is x squared. When we do that, what are we left with? x plus 1. And, I need these insides to match exactly. I need x plus 1 and x plus 1. And I've got that. 
So what can I factor out of here that's not going to change it at all? What can I always multiply or divide by without changing anything? I can take out a 1, and it's not going to change that inside factor. So looking common between these two, we've got x plus 1 that we can take out of both. And what are we left over with? x squared and positive 1. And if you can recognize that these factors match exactly, we don't have to write the 1 out on the front. But I think it's helpful because when you're factoring in the next step, you automatically have what's left over there. You're not going to be um, tempted to put plus 0 because then that whole term would be gone. We have that placeholder 1 that we need. So let's practice on a few more. Part C, again, grouping the first two and the last two. Now this one is negative, so the sign has to go with that third term. So I'm going to add that negative attached to x. So we can add, we can throw in a little plus sign there without changing anything. And common between these two that we can factor out of both. 2x squared. When we do that, what are we left with? I've got 1x left over, and I'm subtracting 3. Okay, so we can kind of look ahead. I need these to match exactly. And what do we notice about them? They're exact opposites. So what do I need to factor out of this second term to make my insides match exactly here? I need to take out a factor of a negative. If I take out a negative 1, what are we left with? Negative divided by a negative. Positive. Positive divided by a negative. Negative. So now, they match exactly. So common between these two that we can take out of both. It's going to be x minus 3. And what are we left with when we do that? 2x squared. And we're subtracting... And we can always foil it back out, make sure we get back to the original. Last one before you start trying a few. Again, group in first two, last two. And common between these two that we can take out is an x squared. What are we left with when we take x squared out of x cubed? I've got one left over. x squared divided by x squared. Same thing divided by the same thing. One common between these two that we can take out of both. It's a factor of 2, and we'll be left with x minus 1. But, looking now at my terms, do these match exactly? Can I factor those out? No, I've got a plus here and a minus there. So, this polynomial can't be factored by grouping. Can't be factored by grouping. So even if we have a four-term polynomial, it's not necessarily guaranteed that we can factor by grouping. It's just a nice method to try. It's a good first try. If I have four terms, I should try grouping, then factoring, but sometimes it doesn't work out. Other option for this that we could try is changing orders around and regrouping since addition is commutative, we can change orders without changing the polynomial. But even then, still can't be factored by grouping. Sometimes that happens. So go ahead and take the next four examples and factor by grouping if you can't, tell me. So in the first, we've got t's involved, but that's fine. Group in the first two and the last two. Common between the first two that we can take out of both. 2t squared, and what are we left with on the inside now? 4t plus 1, and a common between these two that we can factor out of both is a positive 3. When we do that, what are we left with? 4t plus 1. Now look at common between these two that we can take out of both. Is that 4t plus 1? When we do that, what are we left with? 2t squared, and I'm adding 3. 
So we could factor that one. And again, we could FOIL it out, multiply it all out, make sure we get back to the original if you think you made mistakes. For the second one, the third term is negative, so that needs to go with the term. So I'm going to add a little plus in there so I don't forget. And common between the first two that we can take out of both. 3x squared. What are we left with? 1x minus 2. And we're trying to make these match exactly. They're opposites right now, so what needs to come out of that term? A negative. Everything will change sign. Common between these two that we can factor out of both. x minus 2. When we do that, what are we left with? From the first term, 3x squared. From the second one, negative 1. Not so bad. Keep on keeping on. I've got another negative down below. So that needs to go with the third term. Common between the first two that we can take out. y cubed. When we left with y minus 2 common between these two that we can factor out is negative 2. When we do that, we're left with y plus 5. But what do you notice here? Do these match exactly? Excuse me. No. These are not matching. So what about this polynomial? Can't be factored by grouping. Can be factored by grouping. Sometimes that happens. Could try changing the order around. Regrouping, trying to factor again, not going to get you anywhere. And last, first two, last two. Common between the first two that we can take out of both is 3m3. What are we left with? m2 minus 5. And common between these two that we can factor out of both is a factor of positive 2. We'll be left with m squared minus 5. So what are we looking at? Common between these two that we can take out of both is m squared minus 5. When we do that, what's left over? 3m3 plus 2. And again, we can always check. Foil it back out, make sure we get back to the original four-term polynomial.